Hello people, I hope you're having a good MLK day. Obviously there's no One Piece chapter this week, so instead I've decided to hit you up with this video right here. And this is a very heavily discussed topic amongst uh, the One Piece fandom. I feel like I've seen a lot of people talk about it. I've seen Rogers Bass talk about it, Anime Fan Talk talk about it, Mugi Watamap B talked about it, and I was actually in a live stream with Zoro Fanboy and the Jora Shay where in which we, we touched on this topic as well. And I feel like there's a consensus overall in terms of who we think are the, the characters that are more likely or have the higher probability of dying near the end of the series. So I wanted to make this video just to give you my, my breakdown and also like sort of like give you arguments uh, for and against. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna do a top five you know, going from the least likely to die to the one that has the highest probability of dying in the end of the series. Notice that I'm saying end of the series because I feel like that's where Oda likes doing stuff. He did, like, he killed off two major characters, well, two, two characters in the middle of the series, which is Whitebeard and Ace, and I feel like he's reserving a lot of those deaths for the end of the series, or at least nearing the end of the series. Now, I'm not gonna touch any One Piece villains in this video, so if you wanna discuss whether or not Blackbeard or Akainu are gonna die, you can do that in the comments section, but for the purposes of this video, I will be focusing on the quote unquote good side, if you will. All right, another thing, this is a top five video, but instead of going five, four, three, two, one, uh, you know, from the lowest probability to the highest probability, I'm going to start with a character that I think has the highest, highest probability of dying in the end of the series, and that is Shanks. To draw a comparison, I think that Shanks is basically going to be like the white beard of, instead of Marineford, Shanks is going to be the white beard of the final war arc in One Piece. We're going to see some crazy hockey control, stuff we haven't even fucking seen or imagined, just some crazy shit. He might be able to stop time with it, just... It just this OP guy going all out, just fucking wrecking shit up. Like, that's what I want to see from Shanks. I think that's what we're going to get. And there's been a lot of foreshadowing that eventually Shanks will fight Marshall D. Teach, a.k.a. Blackbeard. And I think that he's going to lose. Uh, Blackbeard, for, for whatever reason, he's already been able to leave a mark on Shanks. Obviously, the scar that Shanks has over his eye, that's something that Blackbeard... Blackbeard gave to him. So this being a shonen, we know that at some point Luffy being the main character will eventually have to face Blackbeard 1v1 because that's just the, the shonen formula. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for Shanks to be the one to defeat Blackbeard from a narrative standpoint. So that kind of like, you know, leaves two options. Either like Blackbeard really fucks him up to the point that Shanks can't do anything or Blackbeard ends up killing Shanks and that motivates Luffy further uh, to try and take Blackbeard down. So uh, another thing is like Blackbeard has two of the strongest devil fruits ever introduced in the series. I happen to think that he's also going to get the strongest Zoan type devil fruit. I made a video about this a while ago. I think that he's gonna steal Kaido's devil fruit after Wano, so keep your eyes up for that. And this actually brings me to the whole, like the, the role of Shanks as a character, which is that of a, of a motivator, as, a, as a sort of like this idol, but also like this, this mentor to Luffy. He gave Luffy the straw hat that belonged to Goldie Roger, and he said, return this hat to me when you become a great pirate. And I think that that moment, I honestly think that Luffy's never gonna give back that hat, honestly, because when Luffy becomes a great pirate, which I think, to me, I think the measure for that is when he surpasses Shanks, Shanks is probably gonna be like, don't give it back to me. Give it to somebody else that you think is worthy of the next generation. So I do think the straw hat needs to continue to be passed down from generation to generation, kind of like the same concept of the will of fire from Naruto. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense for the for the straw hat to go back to Shanks in the end of the series. Now, uh, this kind of brings me to my my fifth pick, uh, the character in this list who I think is less likely to die, but the possibility is there all the less. In fact, I think the, the possibility is there just because of my number two pick, which I'll get into a little bit. But basically, I think... Um, another character that I think is likely to die in One Piece is Luffy. And before I go on, I just want to say that I absolutely agree with the idea that none of the Straw Hats can permanently die until they accomplish their goals, okay? Uh, and I say permanently for a reason, I'll, I'll tell you why in, in a bit. But essentially, once Luffy becomes Pirate King, that's a whole different ballgame. And actually, the, the main argument for Luffy dying and, and the main argument against Luffy dying is kind of like the same one. It's the parallels and the connection that he has with Roger. They are both Ds, they both come from the East Blue, just their attitude towards life is similar, just a lot of similarities. And so what Roger ended up doing was that he turned himself in, he sacrificed himself, he was executed uh, publicly, and he started the new age of piracy. And I think that's what Luffy may end up doing in the end. In that he knows that you know his will will live on through the, the 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 start of a new era, if you will. Now the argument against that is precisely that 
Luffy is already too similar to Roger. So if Oda were to do that by the end, if we had the entire crew watching Luffy be executed and Luffy, Luffy's final word would be like, I left it all in one place. Go and find it. That would just be way too similar to Roger's story. It would be very emotional, you know, having Luffy die and having the crew there crying their eyes out and stuff, but it would be repetitive from a narrative standpoint. Another argument against Luffy dying is that Luffy has already been in Log Town, which is exactly the place where Goldie Roger was executed, and he was even there. He was about to be killed. Buggy was about to, like, quote-unquote, execute him, and he was saved. So if that were to happen again, it would just make a lot... Again, it would just be way too repetitive. It's like, Luffy... We know that Luffy is not afraid of dying. He said it from the very first episode. You know, if I have to die, I die, but at least I tried to get the one piece. At least I tried to become Pirate King. That's what matters to me. The adventure is what matters to me. And uh, Buggy was about to kill him, and he didn't die. So you would end up having the same fucking scene in the end of the series for him to be executed publicly. It just wouldn't make a lot of sense. Now, coming in at number four, I actually have Robin. I think the speculation and the probability of her dying eventually rose up after Zo because there's a scene in that arc where Nekomamushi tells her, you know, the probability of pirates coming after you to try and capture you so that you can decipher the poneglyphs for them is very fucking high. And she kind of laughed it off in a bit, like everybody was like, no, no, we'll defend you, Robin. She kind of laughed it off. But if you look at Robin's character, uh, it's been obvious to me that she has been willing to die for her friends ever since the Aeneas, Lo Aeneas Lobby arc. Like, that's why she gave in to CP9's demands. She was like, just don't hurt my friends, leave them alone, take me in and, and just do whatever you want with me, but don't fuck with my friends. So I really do think that that mentality of sacrificing herself is still there, and she might end up doing something similar uh, with Blackbeard. I think she's willing to actually just die with that information, with the knowledge of deciphering the poneglyphs, then actually opening up her mouth and telling uh, Blackbeard how to read the red poneglyphs so that he can get to Raftal. So that's a high possibility when it comes to Robin. Now the arguments against her dying are very simple. Number one, we know that the, the Kozuki clan, Kozuki clan, sorry, uh, in Wano were the people who actually invented the poneglyphs. So if we go to Wano and we find somebody who can read the poneglyphs, then Robin is technically off the hook because you basically the spotlight is going to shift to this new, this new character in Wano who may be able to decipher the poneglyphs as well. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is that if you look at Robin's character, she's basically like, uh, like Sasuke. And I mean this seriously. She, she's basically the last remaining survivor of her clan, of the Ohada, the Ohada archaeologists. So if Robin dies, the lineage of Ohada dies with her. And so one of the cool things that authors tend to do is that if, if somebody is the last survivor... They have him like, you know, pair up with somebody and they have a kid and that's how the clan, or in this case, the Ohara culture lives on through Robin. Robin's child could be another archaeologist because there aren't any left because the world government killed them all. Coming in at number three is Usopp. Now, Usopp's death speculation kind of stems from his very own goal, which is to become a brave warrior of the sea. Just from a basic humanistic standpoint, there are very few things that are braver uh, than somebody giving up their life. For, for the life of a friend. And I think that's kind of where this is going. It would make sense, uh, just narratively speaking, uh, even though it would be really sad. Uh, there's this one part, and this is key, there's this one panel in Little Garden where Usopp says this. Read this, please. Just read this. Holy shit. Usopp has a way of like foreshadowing stuff, even though he says a lot of stuff. He talks a lot, but sometimes his lies have proven to become true eventually. Uh, and so this is kind of like a way of him saying, this is maybe how I want to go out. And that would be some manly shit. We're talking bull testicles for days, all right? Now, before Usopp goes out, if he goes out, all right, there's three things that need to happen. Obviously, he needs to go to Elbaf, which is, again, I think that's where Big Mom is going to be defeated. Uh, number two, he has to reunite with his dad. I think they're, they're going to have a moment, you know, Yasop and, and Usopp. And, and, you know, I think Yasop is going to admit to him publicly, that he's super proud of him, that he has become this great warrior. And then last but not least, his fight with Ben Ogre definitely has to happen. All right, Luffy has to fight Blackbeard, Zoro has to fight Shiryu, and Usopp has to fight Ben Ogre. I don't know who the rest of the Straw Hats are going to fight with, but those three are pretty much set in stone at this point. Oh, and also, Usopp has to reunite with Kaya at some point. Uh, 
And I think they have to get married because Kaya right now has a lot of suitors. She's very rich, and so a lot of people want to get married with her. But you know, we we know we know what's going on. We know that you know her heart belongs to to Usopp. And actually, Kaya is the main argument that I have for Usopp not dying because when Usopp left the village, I remember him telling Kaya, Kaya, when I come back, the stories that I'm going to have to tell you. I mean, are going to be greater than the ones I've, I've been telling you thus far. So that kind of, that's that's some foreshadowing there that they're going to, you know, reunite and Usopp can have that time to talk about all his crazy adventures. Coming in at number two, and this is the last character on the list because I already talked about Shanks, is Law. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know where this is headed because of the Filipino spoilers that came out last year, despite the fact that a lot of people thought that those spoilers were not credible. And I think, you know, their, their, their credibility is very iffy. Uh, I, I also happen to think that it, they made some sound arguments, like there were some sound points, some sound predictions in them. And one of them is the following, is the fact that I, I do think that Law will eventually sacrifice himself to save Luffy's life. Now, the whole point of this goes back to Dress Rosa. There's a scene in which Doflamingo basically asks Law or tells him that he wants to use him because he has the opi opi no me and that the user of that fruit can actually perform the immortality surgery on somebody else so he can perform the immortality surgery on another individual and that individual becomes immortal meanwhile law loses his life so that's kind of like the catch you make somebody immortal but you actually end up dying now the way that people in the spoilers were thinking about this going down is that kaido actually ends up killing luffy or that luffy dies at the end of the fight with kaido and law is left no choice but to revive him using that power now i know a lot of people do have a problem with luffy becoming immortal down the road just because it would it would remove a lot of the tension a lot of the like the conflict and, and the stakes wouldn't be as high because if you can't die well then what, what's the point but at the same time you have to remember that luffy we already established that luffy will probably end up fighting blackbeard and blackbeard has the ability of nullifying and absorbing devil fruit powers so if he goes up against blackbeard blackbeard can still take care of him and be and make luffy mortal again by absorbing that immortality that law left him with now another thing that i want to say is that because of law's history we know that law has like this white lead poisoning disease he had it as a kid and the only reason he was able to survive was because Corazon helped him get the Opie Opie no Mi. So if Law actually fights or goes up against Blackbeard, if Blackbeard absorbs uh, Law's devil fruit from him, Law's dead either way because the only reason he's alive is because he ate that devil fruit. Another thing here is that Law's main objective from the beginning of the New World was to take down Doflamingo to avenge Corazon, and that's already happened. So his mission and his objective as a character, unless he comes up with a new one, has already been resolved. It's already been addressed. Law happens to also be a D. He's part of a family of Ds, and Ds have a tendency to sacrifice themselves for other people. I already mentioned how Roger kind of sacrificed himself to start the new Age of Pirates. Uh, his wife, Rogue ended up sacrificing herself so that Ace could live, so that he could be safe. Uh, Saul sacrificed himself to save Robin, and, and then Ace sacrificed himself to save Luffy from Akainu. So that's a tendency. And so, you know, the, the point is, is that Law sacrificing himself to save Luffy, which, by the way, Luffy is the main reason why they were able to take down Doflamingo, even though Law helped. Um, it, it's not that far-fetched. Finally, and this is just like a, a, a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel, uh, you know, so that we can have a happy ending if any of this goes down. I do think that because Brook has the revive, revive fruit, if he knows and he learns how to master it by the end of the series, which I'm pretty sure he will, I, I already said this in my Devil Fruit Awakening video, but I'm pretty sure that Brook will be able to bring people back to life. Uh, but not not forever. I think it'll just be momentarily so that people could, you know, uh, sort of like just have some closure and just talk to each other. So I do think that Brooke will be able to bring people back to life, if only momentarily, just for the sake of closure in the series. It'll be sad, but hey, you never know. That's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And comment with your thoughts down below. Thank you guys. Bye.